Jessica Chestnut, Senior Online Product Specialist with Oxford University Press. It's my pleasure to be here to give you an overview of Oxford bibliographies. This site contains thousands of bibliographies in any of the given subject areas you'll see on the screen. Each of the individual articles is a guided tour through the key literature on a specific topic. From the home page, you could get into an article by browsing into any of these subject areas or searching up at the top. You'll know that your content is always up to date because the site is updated monthly with new articles and every single article on the site is reviewed annually via a peer review process. Now let's get into some content. I'm going to run a quick search at the top of the screen for poverty. Now, your search terms will be presented at the top and can be eliminated to broaden your search, or you could apply some filters down on the bottom left to narrow your search. Those filters are by subject. The results that you're looking at in the main frame here are article results. You can also look for results that come from the actual citation text, and that would mean that your search term appears within the citation text itself as opposed to the main text of the article. When you're looking at citation results, you'll be able to see what type of citation it is by these icons. The J here indicating a journal article, the globe indicating an online resource, and this sheaf of papers indicating a data set. You'll also have books and other types of resources included. Back into the Articles tab, let's actually get into an example article. We'll go into this one for poverty from the social work module. Your search term will be highlighted, and if that's obtrusive to your user experience, simply eliminate it at the top left. You can search within the article from this area as well, and then toggle between the instances of that search result using these previous and next buttons here. Continuing down, you'll see the table of contents of this individual article. Now, every article on Oxford Bibliographies consists of four parts that repeat again and again. If I scroll down a little bit, you'll get a sense of what I mean. The first part would be the headings. General overviews here is a heading, and the headings are what are listed in the table of contents on the left-hand side. That's part one. Part two is your commentary. This commentary text that appears beneath the heading is going to give you context about the sources that follow. Part three will be the citations themselves. Here, this Rebecca Blank item is the citation, part three. And part four would be the annotation that follows the citation. The annotations are going to also give you context, but they're specifically about this individual source, as opposed to the grouping of sources. So those four parts, heading, commentary, citation, and annotation repeat again and again underneath each of these sections in your table of contents. And this is the standard presentation across the site. As you're reading through the article, if you find a source that you'd like to pursue, simply open Find This Resource, and you'll be able to search for that resource in your library catalog via OpenURL Link Resolver, or to find it in other sources, including WorldCat and Google. You can also look for this source in the Oxford Index. The Oxford Index is a special service that has rolled out across Oxford's publishing to enable larger, broader searching across the different types of content that we produce. At the bottom of the screen, you'll notice this underbar, which can be expanded to springboard your research to related content across our sites. For example, you have journal articles here, as well as content from our scholarly monographs. If you don't need this content, simply minimize the index and you're back on Oxford Bibliographies. I'm going to draw your attention to the top of the screen now, to this area at the top right, where you have a number of options in terms of what you can do with the main content on the screen. So if we move from left to right, the first item here will let you build your citation list. Every single member of your institution can have a personal profile and save content on the site. When you build your citation list, you can choose individual citations found throughout this article and annotate them right on the screen. Then click Save, and they'll be sent to your personal profile. The next item over is going to let you export a citation for the article itself. 
you can send it to EndNote, Reference Manager, ProSite, RefWorks, or Zotero. This will save you time and help eliminate error. Continuing over, you can print the content or email it. You can also cite the content for the actual citations in the screen. Finally, your last two options enable the sharing of this content via social networking sites, as well as changing the text size. Your preferences for text size will be remembered and affiliated with your personal profile. If you want to only save one citation at a time, instead of building the whole citation list, you can go underneath each individual citation and click Save. When something has already been saved, you'll note that the text becomes green and it will indicate saved to my OBO. You can also export individual citations and email individual citations beneath the individual citations in the article. On the right hand of your article, you'll have information about the subject area. In this instance, we're looking at social work. I can click to learn more about this section, or I can learn more about the editorial board that helps to drive our editorial vision for the social work content. Beneath that, I can jump to adjacent articles as well. Now you might want to run an advanced search on this site as opposed to the quick search that I ran at the beginning. The advanced search is at the top above your quick search from every screen. From here, you can choose to search within specific sections of the articles, specifying the title, author, subheading, or citation title or author. Add more search terms if you'd like, specifying the relationships between them, and remove any if you don't need them. Continuing down, if you search within the citation text, you can also specify the format of your citation. And finally, you can add subject filters to be very specific in your searching. Your saved content is then available in two places. One is in My Searches, which is available in this gray toolbar on any part of the site. Hovering over My Searches will bring you both your recently viewed as well as your saved searches. If you don't choose to use a personal profile, you will still have your recently viewed available. You can also find your saved searches and citations together in My OBO at the top of the screen. Your saved content will be broken into the tabs you see on the screen, most recent containing both searches and content from the past 30 days. And then my citations and my searches will be specifically that type of saved item, regardless of date saved. From here, you could either revisit the saved item, export it, or email the citation. You can also edit your annotation that you've applied. My account is simply where you would change your password. We don't contact these individuals unless they get locked out of the site. That's Oxford Bibliographies. Your best research starts here.